As you guys know, Joe Biden had to fly private chartered jet when he came to Washington. The military did not send a military aircraft for him. Then, upon entering one particular building, the military did not salute Joseph Biden. What's going on here? Well, I just received an email from Wayne Jett who writes, Upon review of the summary report submitted by DNI Ratcliffe of findings by intelligence agencies that Americans colluded with foreign governments to subvert the U.S. elections of November 3, 2020, President Trump invoked statutory provisions of the Insurrection Act, which authorized the U.S. military to take actions required to defeat the insurrection. Military officials and forces under their command are presently taking actions to defeat the insurrection and to restore and preserve constitutional government. The deployment of military forces within the areas of the Capitol and the White House are believed to be part of those actions. I will be interviewing Wayne this coming week, so stay tuned. His new article, Great News, Military Blocks Insurgency. This is a time of extraordinary stress for many Americans, but the stress is caused by lack of vital information, not by true facts on the ground in the historic conflict now underway. Most Americans are unaware that the U.S. Military High Command has been investigating a criminal insurrection aimed at subverting the November 3rd federal elections. With that knowledge in hand, the outlook for Americans and the future of their constitutional republic is much improved and potentially may become the best since its founding. The wounds hurt, but most Americans and many more worldwide remain disconsolate. Political wounds inflicted by fraudulent vote counting practices in the November 3rd presidential election and the January 5th Georgia runoff elections for U.S. Senate seats are still raw. More wounds were inflicted by Vice President Mike Pence. He failed to perform his constitutional duties to resolve vital issues raised by competing electors in multiple states where vote counting fraud was rampant. Then, most recently, we were shown the portrayed inauguration of Joe Biden as president, with major media insisting it is so. Most observers, including many Trump supporters, assume or fear the Biden presidency is permanent and irreversible. Not so. The Insurrection Act is invoked. The proper place to begin understanding where the nation and the presidency stands now is the Insurrection Act of 1807. That early statute authorized the president to call upon land and naval forces to defend against and to defeat any attempt to take control of federal, state, or local government by unlawful means. In mid-2018, President Donald Trump signed an executive order to detect and protect against and prevent any attempt to subvert free and fair elections on November 3, 2020. Provisions of the order included advance assignments of duties by intelligence agencies to investigate and protect against any foreign interference in the elections. The order included specified time scheduled for precautions and surveillance to be in place for investigations and reporting by federal intelligence agencies of any instances of unlawful conduct to the Director of National Intelligence. The DNI was directed to compile his summary report of findings and deliver it to the President. Though delayed from the original schedule set by President Trump, the DNI reports to the President determined that numerous unlawful actions, including interference and collusion by foreign governments in concert with American citizens did in fact occur. In summary, the president was officially notified that identified foreign governments colluded with American actors to subvert and compromise the federal elections of November 3rd. Based upon the DNI report and related intelligence, President Trump invoked the Insurrection Act, placing authority and responsibility upon U.S. military commands to proceed with their statutory duties to defeat the insurrection and preserve constitutional government. Foreign governments reported to be involved with American nationals include the United Kingdom, Canada, Germany, France, Italy, the Vatican, and China. Troops occupy the capital. This is the context within which a reported 25,000 National Guard troops were called to duty and deployed at stations within Washington, D.C. during the days leading to and including the widely broadcast swearing-in of Joe Biden as president on January 20th. The military deployment was ordered by the Pentagon, not by Congress, the Senate, or the President. This is the factual context 
within which armed military forces took up positions around the U.S. Capitol and the White House. The Pentagon is reported to have a corps of 800 high-ranking officers focused upon defeating the insurrection involving collusion with foreign governments described above. Those officers are taking the precautions necessary to protect the nation, preserve and defend the Constitution, and defeat the insurrection. The plan and the delay. A source, believed to be reliable, says Pentagon officials were prepared to arrest Joe Biden and numerous others on January 20th at the time of the scheduled inauguration, but were deterred from doing so by an undisclosed consideration, perhaps a threat of use of weapons of mass destruction. Military officials reportedly sought guidance from President Trump regarding the threat and ultimately determined to defer arrests until the threat is fully debunked. Arrests have been deferred until the threat is dealt with, which may be within a matter of days, weeks, or as long as about two months. Likely prospects. If these described circumstances of January 20th are true, almost certainly Biden will be treated by law as never having become president. Indeed, he is likely to be treated as one who has conspired and acted to seize the presidency by treasonous means. Biden is reported already to have been denied access to classified information requested from the Pentagon and has been instructed not to come to the Pentagon or send his staff there. These reports, if accurate, indicate the military command has concluded that Biden was declared the winner of the presidential election due to a criminal insurrection as proven by convincing evidence. If this is indeed the case, Biden's orders and actions in the White House are null, void, and additional criminal acts. While military officials complete their work in defeating the reported insurrection, President Donald Trump remains on the sidelines to be consulted as military officials see fit. Author Wayne Jett, ClassicalCapital.com, and the author of the book The Fruits of Graft.